Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, August the 6th, 8 o'clock a.m. in 2022, and we're here in Deuteronomy chapter number 10 today, cruising right along one chapter at a time through Deuteronomy. Thanks so much for watching. Turn your Bibles there with me, Deuteronomy 10, fifth book of the Bible, fifth book of the Old Testament. So from the start there, and we'll pray and get right into it. Father, thank you for our study. Thank you for the people that watch. Uh, many faithful every single day, they listen. And then there are those who pop in occasionally, and we're grateful for them too. We do pray that you'll help all of us as your people to become more and more knowledgeable about your word. Please speak to our hearts through it this morning, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Deuteronomy 10, starting right at the top of the chapter, of course. At that time, the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you, in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me, and I turned myself uh, and came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark, which I had made, and there they be, as the Lord commanded me. And so Moses, referring back to when he came down out of the mount, he had the first set of tablets that the Lord had made for him, and he saw the golden calf, he saw the people wickedly dancing and worshiping this calf, and so he threw them down, he broke them. <clears throat> now God calls him back into the mountain again, and he says, all right, <clears throat> you ruined the first set, we got to make another set, but you're going to make them this time. And so he carves out of the stone the tablets. God writes on them again, and he tells him to make this ark out of shittim wood and put those tablets in the ark. Verse number six. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth of the children of Jaakan to Mosera. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eliezer, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his stead. From Gudgodga, I don't know, I didn't say that right, did I? Gudgoda, all right, Gudgoda, that's it. And from Gudgoda to Jotbath, a land of rivers of waters. I, I do okay on much of these names, but those two are new. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stayed in the mount, according to the first time, forty days and forty nights, and the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. So I hope I'm not going too quickly through some of this stuff. We've covered it uh, sometimes one other time, sometimes multiple times. And so Moses going into Mount Sinai, hearing from the Lord the Ten Commandments and the various laws, and he brings it down to the people. The tribe of Levi is the tribe that's set aside for the priesthood and for the service of the tabernacle and the temple, and uh, the sons of Aaron are the priests, and so they're going to carry this ark with the Ten Commandments in it. Verse number 12, <clears throat> And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And this is mindful of, I want to say Micah, the book of Micah. I think I'm right there. Uh, maybe Nahum. I, the, three things doth the Lord require of thee. Love, mercy, do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. 
Here Moses gives a little bit of a different list of requirements. Fear the Lord, walk in his ways, love him, and serve him with all your heart and soul. Boy, what a good uh, goal to set for your life, don't you think? Verse 13, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God. He hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, meaning when Jacob came over, when Joseph invited him and the family, <clears throat> there were seventy people then. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude, which is what he promised Abraham that he would do so many years ago. So we just finished a couple of chapters of Moses warning the people not to go into the way of the heathen, not to go into the way of rebellion, as their previous generation had done, but to come apart from all of that, to separate themselves from the strangers of the land, and to not intermarry with those people and those tribes. And then he calls them to surrender to the Lord, to let go of that rebellious heart, that stiff-necked attitude. He wants them to let go of all that. And he wants them to come and to uh, love God and love people, even the strangers, because they were a stranger. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference here in many, many ways concerning the Old and the New Testament. So many people say, oh, it's completely different. No, we're supposed to love God and love our neighbor in the Old Testament, just as we see it commanded in the New Testament. So very short chapter here today, very simple thoughts, <clears throat> God getting his people to a point in their heart and their disposition to just love him now. Let's not keep going round and round with rebellion, judgment, repentance, blessing, apathy, rebellion, judgment, repentance, blessing. Let's just do right, stay right, and have a good relationship. That's what God's looking for. All right, pretty simple there this morning. Only eight minutes to cover it. Thanks for watching. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here, and I will see you tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, for chapter number 11. God bless you. Have a great day.